Um, I'm very honored to be here. Um, yes, my name is Janae Michelle, and I am not originally a Hoosier. Um, I have been here for 10, 12 years now, who's counting? Um, but I come here via the West Coast. I was born and raised in Lake Tahoe, um, one of the most beautiful places on earth and something I'm very proud to say as far as the city that I am from. Uh, and I grew up there with two amazing parents um, who owned a television company and I naturally went into journalism. And so I decided that would be my thing. I was going to be the next Oprah Winfrey. And, um, and I went into news and um, was working already in my field before um, I graduated college. I went to the University of Nevada, Reno. And I learned more working than I did going to school. That really served not a whole lot of purpose for me, but it was a degree. So, yay degrees in college, um, but uh, I, I learned quite a bit, and uh, after spending a few years working for the ABC affiliate and doing a lot of work for um, just remote stuff for CNN and, and whatnot, and, and I just thought, you know, I really, this isn't, I'm not feeling this. Um, I had always danced my entire life. I had grown up in the entertainment industry on movie sets with my father and commercial sets. I had done catalog shoots and pageantry and um, I started dancing when I was a wee little one. Um, and it was something I thought that my mom just kind of dropped me off when she went to go grocery shopping to do. <laughs> and, and she just, I'll come pick up when I'm done. And um, so I never thought I would go anywhere with it. So. Before I, I went on to my higher education, because you know you can't really make a living as a dancer, that's not really a reputable type job and career to have, um, at least at least from where I come from and the people who told me this. Um, I just I I was working uh, already as a professional showgirl while I was in still in high school, and I still don't think that my teachers know about it. <laughs> Uh, so I would go to school by day. I was 17 years old. I got my first gig auditioning in um, a big showroom at the state line uh, where all the casinos are in Lake Tahoe. And I went to school by day and I worked all night, six days a week, two shows a night. And um, got my education on the catwalk while I watched the little Beatles tribute band do their thing and sing their Sgt. Peppers. And uh, we, I just learn my math in the catwalk. Uh, when I closed that show, 10 days later, um, I was graduating high school. And I was also opening a show that very night with Rip Taylor and Juliet Prowse. And that was a very pivotal evening for me because these are two very iconic people in the entertainment industry who I have great respect for, even though one of them is not very nice. Um, but I still adored them both. And um, I'm so happy to have been able to work with such two very professional people in my life. And uh, so I, I got bitten by this dance bug. And it was a career that took me to Vegas. and. I got to work some amazing showrooms there, great conventions, worked with some amazing producers. It took me around the world. I lived in Japan for a year. I produced shows while I was there. So it was a really interesting ride. And then I came home and did the whole college thing, like I was telling you, because I had to have a real job. And um, I just, I learned a lot from those things. But as I went, this time passed, you know, I just realized that I can't be a dancer for the rest of my life. Your body just won't let you do it. So I thought, well, this isn't going to work for me. I'm going to have to go in and do get a real big girl job, and um, that's why I went into news. So I left dance for years. Um, didn't really do anything with it. Uh, and I ended up getting married. I found somebody who, um, in LA, when I had moved to LA from Reno, because I decided to stop news, because I was tired of talking about the three Ds, dying, death, and destruction. And I decided I'd leave that and go into entertainment. And I went to LA because that's where you go if you want to do that. And wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it just wasn't really what I wanted it to be. It was very pretentious. It wasn't a place that I felt at home with. And I happened to meet somebody there who I then later married who was from Indiana. So that's how I got here. Um, once I got here, um, it was very interesting life for me because I had left everything. Um, everybody I knew, I knew nobody here. Um, I, my family I left on the west coast um, and 
for me trying to find my path here, I didn't have a very supportive spouse. You know, his outlook on the, my past life and all the accomplishments that I had had were really cute. And um, it was something that, that was cute. That's cute that you danced. It's cute you wore those little costumes. You know, and it was very belittled. And so it wasn't celebrated and I had I accomplished a lot and I knew it was great. People told me it was great, but then I'm like, well, maybe it's just not that great. You, know, you doubt yourself and um, you think, okay, well, I guess moving on, you know, and he and I divorced, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, but we had a child together who is the air in my lungs. And um, when we divorced, it was very ugly. And I had decided to get back into news because that was what I knew. That's what I went to school for. And so I was working at Fox 59 News as a producer. And um, I had a great job. It was fine. It was a job. Um, I made a lot of friends there, friends I'm still friends with today. Um, but then, as many people did, they, I lost my job in 2008 for layoffs. Company was bankrupt, Tribune com Company was bankrupt at the time, and myself and a lot of my friends lost my job in the middle of a divorce, in the middle of a custody battle. Um, so it was a really trying time for me, because I thought, oh my god. And finding a job in news again, here, I have how many stations to choose from? You know, maybe a total of five, if I'm lucky, with WFYI, who I'd already worked for already. <laughs> um, so I thought, if I'm unemployed, um, I'm about to get evicted from my house because I can't pay my rent, and I'm going through a custody battle, of which I lost, um, out of just bad luck, and I thought, oh my god, I better hire myself. So I went into PR because that was the next best thing to news that I knew I could make some money with. And I could teach people how to speak news and be on the other side of the fence a little bit and show, especially like nonprofits, I'd try to come up with their stories for them when they'd pitch them to me at Fox 59. And I'm like, I can teach you how to do this. And I sat next to a very influential man when I was on an airplane once and I just simply told him my story and he loved my concepts and he loved what kind of PR person It's very grassroots and organic and he's like you need to work for my company and he just happened to be the chief marketing officer for a major Medicare Advantage organization that was national he changed my life so he was a great client for me paid me my worth and salary they were based in California they flew me all over the country and I was doing PR and I was like okay it's not nine to five um, and in the middle of all of that, I lost a relocation battle with my ex-husband as well. So my son moved to Tennessee. So I couldn't have a traditional job, so boy, I was going to make this work. <laughs> and in the middle of that, I started finding my joy again. Somehow or another, as artists, we, send, we leave it and we come back to it. And I'm sure you both understand that. You leave it and you come back to it. And um, I had started finding some dance in town. I had started going to burlesque and cabaret shows in town. And I had a wonderful partner who wanted to do those things with me. And um, in the middle of all of that devastation, I uh, had found this piece. I started teaching dance again in town and still doing PR. And then when that contract was going downhill a little bit, I was using my dance as a way to supplement my income and then I flip-flopped everything in my life. So I decided to make performing art my mainstream of income rather than PR, which was devastating to our household, <laughs> as you can imagine. We went from making my paycheck was thousands of dollars a month to just a couple hundred. And um, luckily, I have somebody who, again, like I said, just understood that and understood why I was doing it and knew I couldn't have a nine to five job, otherwise I would never see my son. So unless you guys know of a job, a nine to five, they'll let me have a week off a month at least. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> um, so I turned my passion in, in the dance into um, a career, basically. And that's how I turned my art into something that I could actually monetize, which I think is the hardest thing for an artist to do. And I started working with other burlesque groups in town, other cabaret acts. I did a lot of theater. And, um, and I just 
wanted to do it differently than how it was being done here. I had a different background. I came via Vegas. Um, so this, this was very foreign here to me to do shows the, sa the same way that they were all being done. So um, I put my own little group together. I started with two other girls and we got some corporate gigs and um, that spurred us to have our own shows in Broad Ripple which spurred new venues, which spurred a regular show that you can now see twice a month at Buddha Lounge. That changes every single time you see it. The cast change, the show changes. It is probably one of the most ambitious performance works that are out there in the city. And that's not just because of me and I'm saying that and I'm happy and proud, but I'm saying that because I have a hardworking group of ladies who work their tails off for me. Um, so, my own community of fellow performing artists, I have a, a great community around me, um, but there's, talk about the challenges when it comes to artists hurting you, I've seen that as part of my devastation in trying to build an artist community. And I really believe that artists should lift other artists and it has been challenging because there's a lot of other groups in town who feel what I'm doing is completely ruining um, the business of burlesque and cabaret, and it's just really my take and my spin on it. It's how we wanna do it. And I celebrate the way that they wanna do it, and, and so we've had to overcome that. We've had to show everybody this is how we're doing it, and, and we love how what everybody else is doing, so we hope that you'll love what we do too. Um, so when you get some pressure from your own kind of people, it's very hard, and this has not been a truly accepting area as well, because let's face it, we dance in our bras and undies, right? Not super, we're still living in a pretty conservative area, right? So it's hard to take that seriously, I think, for some people. They're very threatened by it. But this little company, I've watched every one of these women turn into something that they never thought they could ever be. They've either found the love that they once had for themselves, or they've found love that they never had for themselves. And that is my why. That is why I do what I do. I don't do it so I can put on shows for all of you. We don't put on shows for ourselves. I put on shows so these women have a place where they can feel confident, that they can explore some dance and do something that they can accomplish. My youngest is 22. My oldest is about to turn 49. I've worked with women who are guest performers who are 50 plus, and I've had 18 year olds who want to perform, and I said, no, <laughs> not ready. <laughs> um, so we have a very diverse group. The women have gone through everything with our group from, from divorce to losing a spouse, to job losses, to painful situations with their children, their moms, their single moms, their family women, and they are my best friends. So it's interesting to see what happens when other women, especially lift women, and when art lifts art. And we keep a very positive outlook in our group, and we like to work our tails off. So. That's a little bit of how we do things. Um, you know, I mean, this really, this business kind of started with a Blackberry and a borrowed laptop, and it's <laughs> turned into a full-blown little company with a total of 13 members. A regular staff photographer who is sitting over here is also my partner who is recently engaged. So, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how this has grown and, and it really has been a special ride and I see us going and spreading that outside of Indiana as we get requests to do so. So that's kind of our little story. I try to keep it again short in the nutshell version, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me later or whatnot. Um, and come see a show. We invite everybody. We, we make you a part of our show. It's not a theater style show. I mean, it's a sit down and and a true lounge feel where you'd have a cocktail and you have some amazing food and you have some amazing conversation and all along the while we try to take you on a journey throughout a few hours throughout the evening. And we do that on the second and last Saturday of every month at Buddha. So come see us and enjoy. Thanks guys. <laughs>